Steel is real. Everyone says it, no one really knows why. Steel is heavy. It rusts, and it could dent or crack, just like any other material. So why is it real? In order to understand, we must dive deep into steel's mechanical properties and investigate how the tubes are made. As a frame builder and mechanical engineer, let me break it down for you. Let's educate ourselves on material properties. When you are engineering a bike frame, you are trying to balance three things, stiffness, strength, and weight. To understand stiffness and strength, you need to understand the stress-strain curve. The stress-strain curve is a generalized method of visualizing how a material acts under a load. On the y-axis, you have stress, which is the amount of force that the material experiences. On the x-axis, you have strain, which is the amount of elongation or stretch that the material experiences. As you apply load to any material, it starts to stretch or compress. As long as you keep it under a certain amount of stress, it will bounce back to its original shape. This is known as elastic deformation. The stress threshold is known as the yield strength. Let's break this down. The more force or stress you apply to a material, the more it deflects or strains. The slope of this line, the stress divided by strain, is the stiffness of the material. The elastic region is where all normal riding occurs, far away from the yield strength. If we keep pushing the material past its yield strength, it starts to permanently deform. This is known as plastic deformation. The material no longer bounces back to its original shape. In the plastic deformation region, the material is not broken. In fact, it can get stronger in a process known as work hardening. Finally, if you keep pushing the material, it will eventually break. This is known as the ultimate strength. Steel has a very large plastic deformation region. The plastic region is what allows you to manipulate steel to form butted tubes, bends, and dimples. Now that we understand the stress-strain curve, let's use it to understand the differences between frame materials. Let's start with 4130 chromoly steel as a baseline. It is pretty stiff, has decent yield strength, and a large plastic deformation region. Next is heat-treated steel. It has the same stiffness as 4130, so it shares the same slope on the stress-strain curve. Heat treating increases the yield strength, but decreases the plastic deformation region. This is why you should never try to bend or dimple hardened steel tubes. Carbon fiber is slightly stiffer than steel, so it has a steeper slope. It is also stronger, but it has almost no plastic deformation. It just fractures. Finally, titanium is a little bit less stiff than steel, but is just as strong as the heat-treated steels. It has a short plastic deformation region, which is what makes it notoriously difficult to work with. Steel is neither the strongest, stiffest, nor the most compliant material. Its true magic lies in its large plastic deformation region. More on that later. One final note, and then a quick break to let your brain marinate. Stress-strain curves do not factor in the weight of a material. Otherwise, we could keep adding material to make something stiffer or stronger. Because bikes are human-powered, weight is always a consideration. To understand the stiffness and strength to weight ratios of material, we must look at the specific strength and specific modulus. I won't spend too much time here, but if we zoom into the chart, we can see that the composites have a better stiffness and strength to weight ratio than all metals. That means if you were to design two bikes of the same stiffness and strength, carbon fiber would be lighter. I know that was a lot of information to take in, so let's take a break and visit a tubing manufacturer and supplier in California, Fairing. Italians have Columbus, the British have Reynolds, and the Americans had True Temper until 2016 when they stopped producing tubes due to the shrinking market of steel bikes. To fill this gap and support the American frame builder, Fairing began sourcing the American raw material and draws them into tubes in Taiwan. These tubes are called Velospec. Rita is one of the owners of Fairing and Velospec. Here's a quick chat. What is Fairing? Fairing is a tubes and a bi-frame parts supplier. And we produce material of steel, aluminum, titanium in our Taiwan factory. What is Velospec? Velospec is the highest quality American steel formed into bi tubes in Taiwan to serve the high end custom frame builders. 
This material is a high strength stainless material, allowed to form thinner wall for lightweight and stronger tubes. The main reason why we use Velospec tubing is that Fairing is open-minded and listen to us frame builders to create the tubes that we need. Like these 35mm down tubes with an extra long butt that allows us to bend for fork clearance. Thanks for uh, showing me around today. I would love to come visit Taiwan and see how tubes are actually made in your factory. Yes, yeah. you're certainly welcome. Now pour your third cup of coffee and let's dive back in to talk about bike-specific steel tubing. All steel bike tubes in the front triangle are butted. This means that the tubes are thick at the ends and thin in the middle. This is the cutaway of a bike tube. The thick ends of the tubes are typically 0.7 to 0.9 millimeters thick. The thin section is typically between 0.4 and 0.7 millimeters thick. When we say a tube is 969 butted, it means that it is 0.9 millimeters thick on the ends and 0.6 millimeters thick in the middle. The reason why is the highest stress happens where the tubes join. Earlier this year, I visited Aura Engineering in Taiwan where I learned how steel and titanium tubes were made. They first start out as a large and thick seamless mother tube. A hydraulic ram forces the mother tube through a die with an internal mandrel to form the inner and outer diameters. This process is known as budding. Budding cold works, plastically deforms, the material making it stronger. It is repeated multiple times to form the final geometry of the tube. How does budding contribute to ride quality? A bike while being ridden is subject to all sorts of different loads. Let's simplify this complex interaction into an easy to understand problem, the cantilevered beam. Imagine you have a tube of known length L, clamped at its end. You apply a force F, and the tube deflects a certain amount delta. The tube's deflection is given by the equation displacement delta equals the force times length cubed divided by 3 times E times I. Throwing back to part 1, E is the modulus of elasticity. It is the slope of the stress strain curve. For steel, this value is 200 gigapascals. I is known as the area moment of inertia. Don't let the name scare you away. The area moment of inertia is the number that describes the contribution of the tube's geometry to the stiffness. It is the parameter we tune with tube diameter and budding in order to achieve the stiffness we want. This is the area moment of inertia equation for a hollow tube. The key takeaway is that the diameter is quartic to the fourth power. This means that small changes in tube diameter will result in large changes of stiffness. Let's look at some real world examples with a quick experiment. I clamped one end of the tube, placed a 24 kilogram mass on the other end, exactly 520 millimeters from the clamp, and measured the deflection of each tube. Here are two 28.6 millimeter Velospec tubes. One is hardened and the other is not. I need to emphasize again that all alloys of steel are the same stiffness, regardless if they are heat treated or not. In practice, heat treating makes the material stronger, which allows manufacturers to use thinner butts, which actually makes heat treated tubes more flexible. Now let's compare three Velospec Elite tubes with the same butt thicknesses, but different diameters. Each step up in diameter is roughly a 15% increase in stiffness. If you understand these principles, you can design strong, lightweight bikes with great ride quality. This is why when Nolan of Bike Sauce tested our new house Hummingbird, it was noticeably more compliant than a steel Hanzo it replaced. Now that we've properly educated ourselves, why is steel real? First is ride quality. You can build steel bikes with more compliance. The secret is in steel's large plastic deformation region of the stress strain curve. That means when steel goes past its yield strength, it bends, it does not fracture. You do not need to overbuild a steel bike to ensure that it's safe to ride. Instead, you can focus on ride quality. The second reason is steel's ability to innovate. It is not a coincidence that the first mountain bikes, gravel bikes, fat bikes, and 29ers were all steel bikes. Once again, this is because of steel's ability to plastically deform and work harden, which allows you to shape and bend tubes to clear tires and drivetrains without having to resort to expensive tooling and equipment. And I'm just getting started. With 3D CAD, metal 3D printing, modern steels, and advancements in casting, I know steel has way more potential. And I'm excited for the future. 
Finally, the biggest reason of all, a simple material that is easy to understand inevitably inspires you to design and build bikes that are simple and fun to ride. Trends come and go, but steel bikes are timeless. No gimmicks, just simple, reliable, and fun bikes. For that reason, steel is real. If you learned something new, leave a comment, like the video. Thanks for watching.